Hi, my name is Chris Little, and I am the host of The Lifestyle Chase. In 2018, I started this show to have meaningful conversations. I've interviewed over a hundred different people, both in and out of the fitness industry. This podcast is something I'm incredibly proud of. Welcome to season four. Thanks for joining me. All right, so welcome to the Lifestyle Chase. I have brought back a guest, Carl Powley, for his fourth appearance on the show, which is kind of cool because if you look on the guest list, there's not too many people who have been on the show four times, but I've always been very enlightened with our conversations, always really enjoyed them, felt kind of like this wholesome, like full cup feeling afterwards. Um, for anybody that's curious as to what that may sound like in past productions, you would be best to go to episode 71, episode 89, or most recently, episode 146 from October 2020. But uh, putting that all aside, how are you doing today, Carl? I'm great. I can't believe I've been on the show four times now. This is a <laughs> setting world records. Well, I mean, it's it's cool how a podcast enables us to make connections with people that we've never met in person. And I mean, having said that, one of my life goals is to actually connect with people that I've interviewed in person. So uh, be on the lookout for that someday in our future. Maybe I'll knock on your door and be like, hey, want to go lift some stuff and go for walks? <laughs> uh, I'll be waiting. Just let me know when. Sounds good. Um, so... First and foremost, when we think back to October 2020, so much has changed in everybody's lives. Like I think anybody that listens to this show is going to walk away with a lot of things that they can relate to, things that they can connect with, and things that make them feel more human. But uh, what I really want to put focus on is like your life and, and some of the big meaningful changes that have happened for you. So uh, kind of filling in the gaps for us. So uh, what, what has life dealt you? Uh, what hasn't it dealt me? Um, well, I think, let's see, let's go back to October of last year. October of last year, around the 20th, you said, marked uh, a month and a half after my wife and I had moved out of our uh, home in San Francisco and we were on our way to uh, moving to Sweden. And um, supposedly October 1st was the date that we were going to be flying out, but due to COVID, uh, it kept on getting pushed back. I, co I could go, but my wife uh, wasn't allowed to travel as an American citizen. And although we're married, we got married in Sweden. Uh, I'm Swedish. Uh, she was not allowed. So we, we, at this point in time last year, we kept on pushing back the travel and it got pushed back uh, far enough that we decided to stay in the U.S. Uh, a little longer because in February, our grandson uh, was due. And uh, come February 9th of 2021, this year, uh, we became grandparents. And slowly but surely, as uh, we were uh, moving from one place to another, but also engaging with our, our grandson and having... Uh, a lot of time together, uh, we got to a point where uh, we learned from, from Swedish immigra immigration that the laws had changed and it would require me to go to Sweden for uh, a longer period of time, uh, get established either by property or rent a place for at least a year, have something under my name, uh, pay taxes and uh, basically uh, show that I am uh, committed to being in the country, uh, we realized that we weren't ready to be apart like that. So Tanya and I weren't ready to uh, go separate ways. And in addition to that, we didn't want to be far away from our grandson. So uh, around May of this year, we decided, okay, we need to stay in the U.S. Um, that's what we're going to do. And from then, from May until uh, just a month ago, we have been looking for uh, the perfect place to spend the next couple of years, uh, meaning a home. 
that allows us to be close to our daughter, close to our grandson, and um, in the Bay Area where uh, we originally were just uh, slightly outside of the, the city now. So here we are. I'm just uh, getting settled into this new place, new life, and uh, all the plans that I had went out the window, and uh, <laughs> here we are, uh, growing roots once again. Something important that I want to shed light on is uh, how so many people's plans have gone out the window. Mm -hmm. Like the more conversations I've had, um, we're all just uh, trying to keep our ship afloat. And I think mm -hmm. when we acknowledge that and we almost own it, it makes us feel better. And I've just been fortunate enough to, to connect with more people in person over the past few months where I'm able to just kind of like an egg crack open. And I was thinking about this analogy before the show. I was thinking about like when you crack an egg open, does mm -hmm. like the, the protein content leave that egg? Like it's still an egg. Like you can still use that egg. It's still very youth useful and can play a big role in everything that is to come. Mm -hmm. And if somebody knows that and knows that about people in their community and people uh, close to them, far from them, looking at themselves in the mirror, then they're able to move forward with like a, a sense of confidence. Um, something that I've always admired about your, your sort of bounce back in these situations, like you've had to face all kinds of different adversity or obstacles or just things that force you to pivot, is just your attitude to own the moment. And I can imagine it's not always easy what are the processes you have to go through in order to do that? Uh, well, first and foremost, thank you. Um, sometimes I wonder if my attitude is as good as people uh, claim it to be. Uh, but maybe, maybe it is. Who, who knows? Sometimes it feels like the, the, the turmoil can, can get me. But um, one thing that is consistent is my... Uh, allowance. I allow myself to feel whatever it is that I'm feeling. And in feeling that, uh, temporarily, I get to believe that I am those feelings. And I get to embody whatever fear or confusion or frustration that I may have. And by embodying it, and moving with it, acting on it, working with it, I always arrive um, on the other side of, of, of that feeling, that, that temporary uh, discomfort or reaction. And on that other side, there's always this sense of um, inner knowing that that was meant to be that way for me to learn something, to uh, become aware of something. And whatever it is that I learned or became aware of, uh, it is my job to integrate it and then transcend past it. And the integration is basically uh, upgrading my operating system, my way, my way of doing things. And the uh, transcendence is uh, not allowing myself to um, uh, uh, live in the past, but rather live in what is right now. And this uh, requires uh, allowing whoever I was yesterday, a minute ago, or right when you asked the question, <laughs> allowing that self to die, basically. And when you allow that self to die, uh, going through somewhat of a grieving uh, process. And um, that process being a little bit of a roller coaster. And just realizing that this is the norm, emotional variability is the norm. And it's actually a sign of health. It's just like heart rate variability. Uh, it's a sign of health. The greater your variability, the more uh, metabolic flexibility you may have, uh, the more access to shifting gears you may have. And when you know how to interact with that emotional variability or your heart rate variability or uh, your uh, training variability, you can direct the ship in uh, whatever direction you need or even desire. And that's very powerful because that is the act of taking full responsibility and taking ownership of, of your life, uh, regardless of circumstance. Well, I like how you highlight the uh, taking ownership 
just of the the situation sort of thing um when i recount to my past situations i might have like a day that didn't go according to plan and it can be very easy to dwell on things that didn't go well or be looking for a win or be looking for positive feedback or something but what is more constructive is to look at the situation look at all of the variables and look at the things that we have the power to change um and be that a very small thing or a very big thing that is kind of what moves the needle going forward one of the things that uh, i observed with with what you've shared on your instagram is just your ability to create like a space just for you which i am assuming is probably where you are right now um i like how how you made it work like so many people would have looked at that same situation and thought this won't do and you were like mm -hmm. well what can i do to make this mine what can i do to own this environment this space um what was the creative process that went into uh making your office space there oh yeah this this little office space which um, i'm still working on uh but it was a little dungeon here in the basement and it was the only space that allowed me to have some privacy within this house that we just moved into it's a it's a a hundred plus year old house that we're, we're renting just for a few years and um it was the best deal that we could find that had all the amenities that we were looking for and also gave us the, the freedom from the landlord to make uh, changes that, um, yeah, fit our needs. Uh, so the creative process was, the process was just how can I create um, a space that allows me to uh, focus for one? Uh, spend time and feel like I am comfortable in the space, that the, the space is conducive for me to uh, do that, which I'm curious about, whether it's reading, writing, uh, jumping on podcasts like this, um, coaching people, which I also do a lot online as I, um, I, I do do a lot of lifestyle coaching. And then also uh, working with my community, whether it's uh, giving lectures or uh, talking about uh, different topics over coffee or tea or whatever it is that, that we do. So that, that was the intention. And, and then uh, simply allowing myself to dive into it without knowing what was going to come from it. And doing this also in a, in a price ac accessible way. I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So what could I do? Well, I can clean it up. That's free. I can paint it. It doesn't uh, cost much money to do. So I painted it. I can just bring in uh, a little you know, succulent to give me some greenery. Uh, I can add some light. I have a floodlight right now that's just bouncing off of uh, a, a nice little ceiling that I put on here. The the ceiling that I put in here, uh, which is just like janky ceiling, but it's a it's a whiteboard ceiling that allows me to uh, grab a dry erase pen and and draw things, so I can have ideas floating around me. Um, so just creating a space that is functional and uh, allowing that functionality to also uh, produce a, a, a sense of just um, well-being and growth. And that's, that's the, the, the creative process. It's just leaning into what you have and working with it and uh, allowing the interaction. So like this moment, I'm thinking, oh, you know what? Uh, maybe right now as I'm here, I see an imbalance in this, this framing. Uh, maybe right here, I'm actually going to have some shelving, which will uh, cut off uh, the background even more. And I can have books or whatever it is that I, I would like to have, or maybe even more plants just to produce a, a more um, appealing image it's always uh, in the work. So uh, I think that's, that's the beauty of uh, creativity is that you get to change as much as you choose to change. I love that. And there's a lot for me to unpack and a lot that I related to. So I will begin to unpack that a little bit. Um, Let's do it. Essentially, like the things that spoke to me the most was if you looked around my space it's kind of right now I use a second camera to produce the show so the audience only sees basically my face you see kind of like a, a blank white backdrop during the pandemic at the very start I was connected to somebody who owns a painting company 
and they actually had quite a bit of just plain white paint that uh, they needed to get rid of. And so I was able to pick that up for free. And that was something that I had control of where I could make use of the spare time that I had and the limited resources at the beginning of gym closures and excess spare time. And I found that that environment shift was extremely effective in uh, maintaining a positive outlook when I couldn't predict the future. And then I alluded to the camera that I used for the production. Um, the camera is actually one that I bought in probably 2012. And for about uh, probably five or six, seven years, it kind of sat in a closet. I never used it. I took it for granted. I listed it on uh, Kijiji or Marketplace a few times. And I thought, well, this, this has no, no use for me. And then I reframed my situation. I realized, well, actually, um, so fun fact, Canon did an update on their firmware. And it allowed me to use the camera as a webcam, whereas like, prior to 2020 that firmware update didn't exist mm -hmm. and so there's just another example of being crafty and what i liked that you highlighted about your ceiling with the whiteboard to my left two whiteboards i've, I've talked about this a few times on the podcast in how whiteboards allow us to just dump our thoughts which i think is extremely important especially in times of facing stress facing frustration wishing that we had a crystal ball to predict what the future holds um whether it be a journaling practice a whiteboard practice uh, having people to talk to or recording voice memos on your phone and deleting them later I think that's incredibly important and for a person that's seeking out a podcast like this that might be a tool that they can use in moving forward and to bring this to kind of a turning point where I'll, I'll give you the floor once more I want to draw attention to some of the things I'm seeing on your backdrop. I can see your book, which I own a copy of, which I'd like to kind of like call out. Um, and then I can see you're wearing a hat with a very familiar looking brand name. So why don't you tell me a bit more about those two things and sort of just some things that uh, you like about uh, those parts of who you are and what you bring and uh, why you have them showcased in your backdrop. Yeah, um, a couple of reasons. One, uh, right here, I have the uh, Korean version of Freestyle the Book. And then here I have the Chinese version of Freestyle the Book. And then I have a, a book that I, I read um, here. You can only see it in the frame. There are more books that go all the way in. But uh, in the frame, I have another book called Earth is Hiring by Peter Kelly, uh, which is, was a book that I read a few years ago. And I... I uh, I could relate uh, to what she was sharing as a, as a businesswoman, entrepreneur who also cares about um, developing uh, greater awareness and how uh, we do things and how it affects and influences our environment and uh, the people around us and how our environment influences us. Uh, I also have uh, uh, Noah Harari's book, Sapiens, which... Uh, is a book that I, I, I definitely enjoyed reading. Um, and then maybe you can see that the next book right here is uh, How Emotions Are Made by Lisa Feldman Barrett. And um, emotional fitness is something that I, I care about deeply and understanding how emotions uh, work um, is uh, extremely important for me just to uh, create awareness in, in my understanding of things. So, yeah, I have these books and then, uh, of course, I, I have these little succulents here, these little plants here as I, I enjoy having some greenery. And then, yeah, I'm wearing this hat. And the reason I'm wearing a hat is because my hair is growing long and uh, it's, a, it's a way of uh, not having to, to do anything about it. But the, the brand itself is, is Strike Movement. Uh, Strike Movement is a Canadian uh, footwear and apparel brand that I got involved with back in 2012, 13 now. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I like how it feels. I like how it looks. And I mean, this, this, uh, this logo, as, as you can see, is a flag. And this logo uh, embodies the, the brand. And, and one of the things that you may see is that the flag is in motion. So our biggest uh, uh, 
motto with uh, strike movement is to be united by motion. The other thing you may be able to see is that um, there's a separation between the top and bottom portion of the flag, which makes the flag an equal sign. So meaning inclusivity, uh, you being me, me being you, all of us being one. And then a very subtle uh, thing that you may you may be able to see there is that the top uh, portion of the flag has a little indentation versus uh, the bottom portion is more flat. Uh, this uh, symbolizes diversity. And the reason it's a flag is because a flag, um, unless it's pinned on a wall, uh, needs movement in the environment to be seen. Meaning if there is no wind, the flag just hangs. You can't see the emblem. You can't see the symbol. Uh, and also a flag tends to stand for um, a state uh, of being, a state of mind, uh, values and principles. And I think um, that's something that I, I enjoy um, sharing as uh, it's a great reminder of um, who we are culturally and in a society and how um, we're the creators of it and we're, we're meaning making machines and uh, in sharing the meaning of how we see the world, we allow other people to do the same. I love that. There was so much from that that uh, kind of intrigued me and got me uh, hyped up. With the book lists, I hope that people take note of all of those books, like check out your book Freestyle. I mean, when we um, had our interview for episode 146, I was listening to it just before we were preparing for this one because I didn't want to like repeat a whole bunch of things that I already spoken about. And I wanted mm -hmm. to um, kind of see where we left off to sort of like see where we could connect and where we could update and everything like that. And when you mentioned about how every time your book got mentioned, it seemed to almost bring life to it. That kind of motivated me because it's like uh, when you're in a place where you're self-aware and you're confident, then helping bring light to other people's projects and passions can make life more exciting. Like we as people facilitating people's fitness journey and like development journey just within their their life, um, we get a certain sense of pride in in seeing people be better or seeing people have a win and it's way easier to find that when we we take care of the house kind of thing if we are being mindful of how much we are getting rest and recovery and our own space to process our thoughts and being in the right uh, company like when you highlighted how you stayed in the u.s because you just you needed your your support network you needed to be with family like your your immediate family kind of thing um then it just showcased how important that is for people just on a never ending level and uh one more thing that i wanted to point out was just if people forget what books that you mentioned or they want to see the detail in the hat now is a perfect opportunity for them to subscribe to the lifestyle chase on youtube i've never really taken time to um, just point that out that that is an option that most of the episodes are on there so i wanted to uh I'm gonna do it right now that is amazing <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to to call that out because like for for myself i have never really drawn attention to the things that I've put effort in. And I think that's important for everybody to take a moment to do that, um, to just own the things that they've put blood, sweat and tears into. Mm -hmm. And the reason I wanted to showcase the hat as well is being a Canadian, seeing a lot of Canadian content, I have seen um, more and more like strike movement uh, pieces in the fitness space which is kind of exciting it's like a, a foreshadowing almost or uh, signs of things to come i tend to be a bit of an optimist but uh wanted to kind of put that pe on people's radar so they can kind of dive down the rabbit hole and see what it's all about and i like how you explained like the almost like the mission of the brand through the logo through everything like that but uh, with that being said, with the book Sapiens, because I've had a few um, other people that I really admire also read that book. It, it's like a common one that I see pop up on book lists quite frequently. What stands out the most to you about that book? 
Yeah, I think it's the way that um, the the author presents the evolution of mankind. And um, although uh, there are some that is in in ways speculative, as as there's still more information to be found about how how we evolved, the storyline itself just um, uh, showcases the the nature of. Uh, the human being of homo sapiens and when you become aware of the nature of your species of your uh yourself uh, all of a sudden you you are confronted with um this sense of having a choice on how you're going to interact with that nature because we do a lot of terrible things this this book is <laughs> sapiens is is basically just saying how in order to meet our needs uh, we are willing to to lie we're willing to destroy uh, but at the same time we're willing to um, create uh, in order to support to nurture but uh, sometimes um, our intention of supporting and nurturing uh, without us being aware of it uh, hurts other people. And in the process of doing this, we come up with stories, uh, one of the main stories being uh, the value of money and uh, a story that we, we all agree on. And realizing that uh, money, especially now, is changing. Uh, we're, we're seeing uh, hyperinflation of the U.S. dollar. Who knows what's going to happen to that? Uh, the economy is changing. Um, Ray Dalio just announced today or yesterday that his uh, new book uh, is, is out and this is about the new world order of uh, that we're entering and his uh, predictions on what it's going to look like um, as somebody who has studied as an economist and a financial advisor and somebody who has done very well when it comes to uh, the concept of money. Uh, and helping a lot of people become very wealthy when it comes to uh, financial assets, uh, him explaining what we're facing and how we could potentially uh, make better decisions. And then couple that with um, what started in 2008 or 2009, technically, with uh, the crypto space and Bitcoin being created. And now uh, there being a little bit of a, 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 a renewed hype uh, around this uh, new way of looking at our economy and uh, and doing this by decentralizing uh, uh, the system and and this uh, being highlighted in, in this in this book in many ways um, uh, his follow-up was homo deus which is a very dark <laughs> I don't recommend <laughs> I don't recommend it but um, it basically prefacing uh, that we have a choice uh, that ownership is the way and that uh, becoming a stu student of how uh, the um, sharing of information and resources and doing this through our craft, our skill sets is at the core of um, how we interact with our nature, with being uh, human. And this bringing up a lot uh, emotionally for people bringing up past experiences that need to be uh, reconciled and need to be reconciled in order to become healthier and healthier simply meaning becoming more whole and whole meaning becoming more connected with not only uh, every single living being on the planet, but also the planet itself. And this is something that I'm very curious about. I, uh, I think about often and I think is, um, although maybe big and esoteric at times and maybe even philosophical, uh, has uh, very pragmatic um, uh, solutions that can be implemented uh, right now in assisting ourselves and others on just feeling better. Definitely. I mean, with everything that you highlighted from that book and just like... Uh I guess my knowledge of how you are a very deep thinker, you're very introspective and you'll take times to lean into the tough moments, even though just like everybody else, you are human and you're not always going to be able to um, be as like agile or, or resilient. Um, but you're willing to, to give it effort. And if, 
if you're anything like me, for me, every time I go into a deep dive on a book like that, or or most like nonfiction books, it's usually at a time where I'm feeling like uh, there's no solutions, there's no way to uh, get out of the hole, or no way to make a dream that I envision possible. And by diving into a book, it helps change up my perspective. It gives me the lessons that others have learned. It helps me reframe my situation. It gives me a bit of a, a mental break where I don't get so much in like the uh, echoing thoughts, the things that don't matter that I think matter and the repetition of them makes them louder. Um, can you think to a time recently when maybe a different book has helped you and, and what was that book if we were going on this book journey? Yeah, it's funny. Um, yesterday I put out one of those, like, ask me anything, uh, posts on Instagram stories and a lot of questions were around books and I realized, ah, I'm not a big book guy. <laughs> you know, I'm not a big book person who necessarily, uh, is influenced by books in a way that uh, I identify with. I'm more uh, keen to understand concepts. And something that I was thinking about as people were saying, hey, can you recommend a book? I was thinking, read whatever is interesting to you. And uh, what came up next for me was in exploring what is interesting, just because you pick up a book, I'm not one to uh, believe that you have to finish that book. If the book isn't interesting, move on. And be done with it. Uh, look up a summary. And then continue to explore. But if I were to um, pick a book, uh, one book that even though I didn't read it at the time, just reading the first chapter uh, helped me was uh, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And I think this was back in 2012 or 13. And uh, my mom gave it to me and I had heard about it, but uh, she gave it to me and I decided I'll, I'll read the first chapter. And I read the first chapter and, and what stood out for me was when Eckhart Tolle, and spoiler alert here, uh, shares how when one night he was having a big panic attack, um, he realized that uh, in his head he was saying, I cannot live with myself. And Eventually, he just passed out, and the next morning when he woke up, he felt this deep sense of peace. And he remembered that the night before, he had said that he could not live with his self, meaning that there was the I, I, the observer, and the myself, uh, another entity within him, a narrative uh, that he didn't have to associate with. And the moment of dissociating with uh, that narrative, finding peace. And uh, this was very helpful for me because I, when I was reading the, the chapter of <laughs> The Power of Now back then, I was very, um, I, I identified deeply, rather, with um, how I was expressing myself in the world. And at that time, I was uh, Carl Pauli, the movement gymnastics coach within the CrossFit space, and uh, a person who was a reference or a subject matter expert who had the solutions to your problems. And uh, that uh, never feeling like enough and me having um, a sense of uh, dissonance, a sense of being an imposter, or simply not uh, truly uh, feeling aligned, connected, coherent, in harmony with that which uh, I was being portrayed as, and um, uh, rightfully so, as I was being portrayed that way because that's how I uh, shared myself. Uh, so yeah, that, that book was a big one for me, and specifically that moment that he explained where there is the observer, the I, and then the am, which is the expression. There's, when you talk about that, I think about times in my life where I've thought like, wow, um, sometimes people will get to know me through my branding on Instagram, through the posts that I put out, through the way I speak or the way that I write. And I feel like they don't quite know me. And 
so when you talk about uh, just your past and your career and that sense of imposter syndrome and that sense of not being enough, I think for myself, I definitely feel like a connection where I'm like, wow, like just reading that little bit of a book is more impactful than we may give it credit for. And to speak to your uh, talking about responses to your ask me anything on Instagram, because I was seeing some of that. I was like, this is great timing because you can tell like the the gears are spinning you're ready to be on a podcast kind of thing mm -hmm. like you're in a place where you're ready to answer all kinds of questions and i would be the same way like i have a shelf of books i haven't read them all to completion there's some that are very popular that uh, i've recommended others to read and i haven't read it to the last page and there's some that i've read from start to finish there's some that i've done the audiobook and i haven't read the book but i bought the book because i just wanted to have it and every bit of effort has been it has had a contribution towards the outcome kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like if I had ignored that opportunity to take just a little bit of time, I would be further behind than when I am now. And so hopefully people that kind of, I identify with that, mm, not a book person kind of, uh, identity. Hopefully mm -hmm. they take the time to, uh, just continue owning that and uh, taking the lessons that they need when they need them and uh, not worrying too much about what it looks like because as time goes on and as life changes and variables change and the environment changes, like we do need to adapt. We do need to change. We can't be the exact same year after year after year, pandemic or no pandemic, financial crisis or no financial crisis. We're just going to change just mm -hmm. like our older role models do. And the more tools that we have to do that, uh, the, the more equipped we are to bounce back and be resilient. Um, I have an interesting question for you, and I'm not sure what the response will be. But the question is, have you heard Macklemore's recent song uh, next year? I have not, but I'll well, have to listen. You're going to have to check it out, and I'll tell you why and what kind of speaks to me. Um, so it's... Macklemore is an artist who I enjoy because I remember you saying you're not much of a music person. So I knew that I wouldn't necessarily get uh, so much as enthusiasm, but perhaps intrigue when mm -hmm. I brought this up. So I, I appreciate Macklemore, though. Uh, and uh, out of the few uh, artists that I've listened to in the past, uh, Macklemore has been one of them. And I, I'm sure that we'll have some like similarities for why that is. Like for me, the first time that I got to see Macklemore perform was actually at uh, the last um, Boonstock Music Festival, which took place in British Columbia. Mm. And he, I think this was around the time that he was going through rehab. Like he was battling addiction and he was going through some major adversity. The way that he puts his lyrics together actually means something like it actually helps people um he's willing to take a stand when it might not make him popular he's willing mm -hmm. to speak to his value system no matter what the backlash may be um he speaks to how important it is to him to be a father he speaks to how important it is for him to show up for his wife and his family and i think there's a substance to that that makes life much more abundant and so in seeing someone like that lead in that way makes me enjoy everything that they put out into the world and to go back to the song so that more and more people go check it out um what i like about it is this sense of optimism that regardless of what we know about next year that next year is going to be better and this is kind of like a paraphrase to his lyrics but it's just speaking to the experiences that we have the opportunity to soak up um, with new year's eve parties with uh, opportunities with how we see ourselves with how we wake up in the morning and by like we can take ownership of the things that may be imperfect about of it about us but we can also take ownership over the opportunities that life gives us, even if it's not consistent, like even if it's, uh, it's ever changing and constantly twisting and turning, 
they're still there. We still have the chance. We, we have the chance to paint our walls white. We have the chance to mm-hmm. read a few pages of a book. We have the chance to connect with strangers from other countries and make them not strangers anymore. Um, when we recount to how you and I first connected, it was through a mutual friend. Mm-hmm. Everybody has the chance to connect through a mutual friend and, and look at what happens from it. Like a four consecutive uh, podcast appearances. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So that is what that song speaks to me. It uh, is kind of something, it's one of those songs, I'm kind of obsessive in the sense that I'll find a song to help me through my challenges, through my adversity, and I'll let that song be like my mantra. And I'll play it and play it and play it. Big fan of Hans Zimmer, helps me kind of get into like the state of flow with uh, my thoughts, helps me unpack, helps me process the situation. What do I have control of? Um, But thinking of the Macklemore song, I think of the opportunities that are in front of us in our respective lives with very different situations and very different uh, seasons of life. But yet the correlation that we have control of our attitude, we have control over um, so many of the connections we make and how they can like unravel like everything that you've showcased with regards to like strike movement and your book, those connections that created that opportunity. These are things that maybe decades ago might not have been even like on the horizon. Mm -hmm. And for us, we have decades in our future where some pretty cool new things can happen. And even speaking to the fact that you're, you're still a young man with the, the title of grandpa like <laughs> there you go crazy things happen have, have you had any people uh just completely flabbergasted with you being a grandpa at your age uh yeah everybody is like how is that possible well it's possible because i became a foster parent uh eight years ago to a teenager who now is 23 and is a mother <laughs> that's how it happens and uh, uh, I wasn't just a foster parent we also adopted so legally adopted and thus uh, officially becoming um, her, our daughter and, and as, as she uh, now has a son uh, making me a grandpa and people being flabbergasted because they are seeing it through two lenses uh, first the lens of time in relationship to uh, societal standards which is kind of like, oh, yeah, you, you don't really have kids until your mid-20s or mid-30s, even late 30s. So if you're 39 right now, uh, how old were you when you had your first kid? They start to do the math and it doesn't uh, fit in their head. And the second thing is with biology. And through the lens of biology, if you think about it, we now at the age of 39 that I am turning 40 here soon, Um, are younger than we were 75,000 years ago. 75,000 years ago, making it to 40 uh, was a challenge if if you even uh, got close to to making it there. So, relatively speaking, biologically, uh, from a biological perspective, we are way younger. And thus, uh, this producing uh, a great amount of dissonance in people's (laughs) perception of you. And I, I think that's beautiful when you can disrupt um, the um, standard of perception, uh, you can make great change. Now, that doesn't make it easy. It's, uh, it produces a lot of internal turmoil because you have to reconcile uh, the projections of others onto you. And then you have to uh, transform it into hopefully a projection onto others that is conducive for positive change and positive change being that which produces once again, greater levels of health, wholeness, well-being, fulfillment, and allows them to do the same and thus uh, continue that ripple effect outward in terms of our uh, human evolution. I mean, in hearing your your response to just that whole situation, I guess, like it just draws attention to the fact that no matter where we are in life, people's people's perceptions or expectations or standards that they think that everybody should be at don't really matter in our human experience. Mm -hmm. And when we know that, 
we in turn empower ourselves to have a better go at this thing that we call life kind of thing. Like, I mean, Mm -hmm. very similar to, I can imagine anybody that starts like, uh, a business um in apparel or maybe a restaurant or most fitness professionals when they're like yeah i'm gonna do this for a living and it's gonna look like this and they're probably gonna get like uh, some some comments on to well i've never seen somebody do that before or i don't i don't think i'd be willing to do it so i don't think it's possible for you and when you highlighted the fact that well people are getting older now like people are living longer people are having more experiences in their life because um science and uh just evolution of the human being and technology and education enables us to have those opportunities so like uh the only thing that really matters is what a person has set out for themselves and uh how how they bounce back when they come across challenges sort of thing like i think if we give people the tools to protect their house to stay the course and to trust the process in in a very uh functional way not so much a woo woo way where it's like oh you know like coming across some tough luck trust the process no like coming across some tough luck look around the room look at what you have at your disposal and be open-minded in, in how you're going to use those tools to give yourself an edge in this mm-hmm. situation. Um, I really hope that uh, people take opportunities to get introspective themselves because they find introverted, introspective people are not the most common type of person in the world. And so what we bring to the table is this sense of uh, sometimes thinking too much, but Mm -hmm. sometimes thinking so much that we can produce clarity in an unclear situation that many people might struggle with. Mm -hmm. Um, Essentially, I've I've really uh, rambled on and on quite a bit, but when I shared my thoughts on the Macklemore song, my thoughts going into the new year, and my uh, sort of sense of, optimism i don't want to assume that you are completely on the same page in that so i'm just going to ask like what what do you think of the year 2022 what are you thinking is is coming i think it's going to be probably a, a harder year globally speaking than this year and uh it's only going to get a little tougher uh before it gets lighter and thus we need to become uh, students of the game and the game is the game of evolution and noticing uh, how are resources flowing when looking at resources what are the resources that are the most valuable to us in uh, participating and learning how the resources flow realizing how our skill sets our strengths participate in that flow of resources and when doing this, realizing that we are uh, helping uh, our world transcend from the old world into the new world. And this simply means allowing us to move through this pandemic and to um, uh, self-govern better, to uh, create systems locally that affect global globally and the systems that are created globally uh, being influenced from the local systems in a way that they have to change. And um, this is going to be seen financially. I think people in 2022 are going to uh, really start to feel financial pressure that is um, not only a product of this pandemic that we've gone through, but of the last 10 years since um since 2008 when when the the kind of uh, financial crisis uh, occurred here in the US which um inevitably caused some 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 ripples uh you're seeing the rise of of China and what does that mean uh and we're going to have to move past our preconceived ideas of what uh, certain terms mean, certain uh, uh, 
uh, language that is used means, and we need to create a new language. And that new language has to be the language of um, self-development. It has to be the language of service. It has to be the language of um, discipline. Discipline not only being the one of showing up daily, but of developing a skill and realizing that um, the pendulum has swung kind of far in one direction when it comes to skills. Yes, doctors are important. Yes, engineers are important. Yes, all the high paying jobs are important. But the, the jobs that are uh, or the craft that exists in uh, uh, bringing food to your table without having to go and hunt for it is equally as important. Transportation, access to water, power. Uh, those jobs, those uh, <clears throat> craft jobs um, are going to increase in value, I believe. And um, it's time to acknowledge that and to acknowledge that by learning it yourself. Learn to build something. Learn to create something. Build with your hands. Use your hands. Get your hands dirty. Plant something. Grow something. These are the, the, the things that we're going to be faced with. And then we're going to have to face all of the relationships that are conducive for growth, uh, which are all of them, but uh, especially the ones that are bringing hardship. And this is where we have three options. And one option is to uh, move away, ignore it. You can continue to do it. I believe that eventually you're going to encounter it. You can move against it. You can go to war. You can fight it. Or you can lean into it and leaning into it being the one of working with it. And that's going to be the hardest one. But I think the sooner we lean into the hardship that is coming, we become informed. We start to develop our own um, ideas of what uh, needs to happen. And then we articulate it, we express it. And um, ultimately, we're open to the feedback that is going to come from it and then change, evolve with it uh, is that which is going to lead us to get out on the other side and be just a little bit better. So, in other words, the toughness that is coming in terms of uh, the tension that you're going to especially hear uh, in the news, <laughs> mainstream media is, is, is great at entertainment, um, the decisions that different governments are going to make. Um, supposedly uh, with the intention of protecting you uh, and taking care of those who need uh, taking care of um, are going to have to be challenged to some degree. And if you don't know how to challenge them at a macro level, begin to challenge them in your own household, in your own home. And this is where economy comes in, where eco is home, NAMI is management, the management of your home. How are you going to administer your home? How can you self-govern? How can you run your own little state? And how can that state interact with the other states around you, with your neighbors, with your community, with your city, with your state, with your country, with the planet? And how is that, even though subtle, influencing the uh, at a global scale? This is the practice. So I think uh, we're, we're looking into a challenging time. And... Um, as fitness practitioners, for example, something that we can do is we can help people remove the resistance that exists to, for example, participate in fitness, making healthier choices. Um, in addition to that, guiding them in a way that is empowering, not from a standpoint of telling them what to do, but helping them tell themselves what to do. And this also developing uh, a language for um uh, intra-communication, uh, which is communicating with oneself. And there, accessing the mind, and uh, once again, in Eckhart Tolle's uh, example of realizing that there's the observer, the I, and then the narrative, the myself, uh, realizing that the I is the creator, is the one that can change those things. And that as long as you remember that and as long as you influence what you're creating and you do it with um, ahimsa, which is uh, doing no harm in a nonviolent way, um, even though you may cause harm unconsciously or uh, unintentionally, um, 
you will be doing the best that you can and thus uh, the best will be produced. There's a lot that people can run with from that and some of the things that uh, I wanted to, I guess, relate to or provide some of my own experiences with are when a person hears about how there are challenges on their way, it is not necessarily something that means that they will not rise in the face of those challenges. Like if I reflect on the last like six, seven years of my life, my biggest moments where I've grown the most as a person, where I have uh, had the most meaningful things happen and the things that I wouldn't trade for the world have come when I've faced something very tough and leaned into it, as you say. Um, leaning into it being something that is incredibly important to do in life and isn't meant to be done alone. It's the, the beauty of positioning yourself around people that know how to communicate with you, know how to support you, and uh, who also in turn need your help. It's like a two-way street. It's uh, we are in our ecosystems. We are in our in our homes, and we need to uh, see the opportunities to help other people rise up as we lean into the things that uh, test our strength, test our metal, essentially. And uh, as we keep ourselves on track for time, I wanted to give you an opportunity to really showcase something that you want to highlight now at this point in your life as we are recording today on November 30th, 2021. What is something going on in your life that you just want to like put on a billboard, highlight, showcase? Absolutely nothing. (laughs) Now, all I can say about that is that it's important to not be um, not get caught in the illusion of what you think you're perceiving. Maybe you're listening to this and you're thinking, wow, this this dude has it figured out. He knows what to do and what's coming. Whereas uh, the truth is, no, I'm just a dude trying to figure it out and I'm sharing my current state of evolution. And this is the best I've got at this moment. And if that presentation or that visual, that idea assists you in doing the same for yourself, then that's it. Do it. And it's as simple as that. And I, and I think if, if anything, what we're moving towards right now is the economy of emotions. It's realizing that our emotions are the lens through which we see the world and when we notice that the emotions are the lens through which we see the world we will notice what we're thinking and when we notice what we're thinking we will notice what we're embodying and when we notice what we're embodying we'll notice what we're expressing and when we notice what we're expressing we will notice how we're influencing and when we notice how we're influencing we'll notice that that influence itself is influencing us and that becoming this um, infinite cycle that you can be a part of and in that cycle you have chances at every single point in time to make whatever deliberate changes that you want to adjust to redirect yourself in uh, the direction of getting your needs met or accomplishing your goals and it's that simple uh, and simple uh, not being easy but rather um, not as complex as you may think. Mm -hmm. So the last question that I have for you, and this was something that I grabbed from your Twitter account, which kind of stood out to me just based on experiences that I'm going through and things that I'm thinking about at the ready kind of thing. My, my season of life, my, where I'm at in my evolution is, uh, the quote was, it will never be the right time unless you make it the right time. And Mm -hmm. that stood out to me because I feel like that's the most uh, concise, powerful thing that I can tell to someone that can create the biggest impact in their life if they action it. So when you put that on your Twitter, um, what were you thinking of in that process? Yeah, basically, you're the creator of your own reality. 
and you choose when you want that reality to be a reality to to begin to manifest so um there's there's never going to be a moment where everything is perfect so do it when you know you have to love that and with that being said we're going to draw this episode to a close i'm sure we'll have another one in the future but thank you so much for joining me again carl yeah, thank you for having me. This was awesome. I, I appreciate you letting me share and uh, connect with you and, and your audience.